Hello, chappets. We're going back in time to a time when board games were board games. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. And we're going to go around the world in 80 days. Reminds me of a song. 80 days around the world to find a pot of gold. This is Around the World in 80 Days, a board game where you go around a board of 80 spaces and you have to be first. I'm going to show you how to set this up, I'm going to show you how to play, and then I'm going to give you a review about this game, and then I will leave it up to you to decide whether this should be sat on your shelf or whether you should spend 80, 80 pounds around the world buying other games. Yes. So, uh, without further ado, let's cut to the credits so you can see a bit more about this game. At the beginning of the game, each player will choose one of the six colors. You take one of their top hats and then you take one of these travel journal cards. And these have everything that you need to know about the game on it. It explains all the rules and it tells you how to move around the board. I'll explain that in a minute. You'll need to place the game board in the middle of the table so everyone can see it and easily reach it. And then you take your playing pieces and you place them in London. This is the start space and the finishing space. The object of the game is to take your playing piece all the way around the board and visit all the countries and get back to London. And you have to do so and remove all of the money that you have and have less than £10. So if you've got less than £10, you can finish in London. You also have to get rid of three nasty rumours that have been spread about you. So each player will also receive three rumour cards, which they place next to their travel log, and they'll also receive £80 of money cards, which they can keep secret and hidden in their hand. The remaining money cards are placed next to the board in these caches, and the remaining rumour cards, they go back into the box. The final thing you do is take the passe-partout cards, mix them up, obviously, and then place them on the space on the board. You're now ready to play. Et voila, the game is now ready to be played. You'll need to choose a first player, and you can do that any way you wish, or you could follow the instructions which says the player who most who visited London most recently, which is not gonna really work for those people that live in London, honestly. Um, but anywho, so you choose your first player and then you're ready to roll. Well, that's the thing, you're not ready to roll because there's no dice. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be deciding how many spaces you wish to move, depending on how much money you're willing to pay. And that's where this travel journal comes into play. As you can see on the travel journal, if I wish to move one space, it would cost me a whopping one pound. Wow. Or if I wish to move five spaces, it would cost me 15 pounds. And this can go all the way up to 30 spaces, which would cost a 465 spondoolies or pounds. Okay, so we're going to say that red is the start player. Now, and they've decided they wish to move three spaces. So what they'd have to do is pay the cost, which would be six pound into the bank and then move the three spaces. This space that they've landed on is a pass part two space. This is an immediate action. You get to take a pass part two card. And because red is in front of all the other players, they only get to take one card and they have to do what that card says, which says uh, give 10 pound to each player behind you on the track. <laughs> there you go, a bit of take that. But if the red player was 
the second in the race or third or fourth or fifth they get to take two cards and they get to choose which card they wish to use and as you can see this card here is different from this one this is a character card which is a card you can keep it has a special power that you can use once during the game once you use it it goes into the discard pile these kind of character cards break the rules there's also a card with a little clock on it there you go there it is when this card is drawn you have to take all the discards mix them all up and create a new pile the pass pile 2 space is the only space which has an immediate action the other spaces are like so green is on this money space here now this does nothing when you land on it but at the beginning of your next turn let's say that yellow and blue have been like so and red goes again what will happen is you can move as normal or you can stay on that space and pay £10 to the bank or gain £10 from the bank but remember if you give £10 or take £10 from the bank you don't move you stay on that space now let's talk about these numbers as you can see there's a numbers there and there's a number there what happened is at the beginning of your turn these are betting spaces and you're betting on what position you're going to be in by the time it gets back to your turn so blue if it was his turn he bet that he would be second he actually doesn't get anything for that and he just moves as normal but let's say that yellow was there and he was second at the beginning of his turn he would get two times ten the amount of money for being second so he'd get 20 pound whereas red here they bet on being fourth fifth or sixth, which means that they would get 40 pound and obviously if there was less than three players this space does not count as anything now moving down to this part of the board here we have two other spaces here this police news space if you land on it or when you land on it you have to turn your hat upside down to show respect to the police and then on your next turn you discard one of your rumor cards into the box and turn your cap over and you kind of like miss a turn but you've discarded one of the three rumor cards and then on your following turn you can move as normal now these red spaces are stayover spaces you have paris here and you have brin did this there and swiss there okay these spaces you cannot move onto by moving forward you have to move backwards onto these spaces so if yellow was here and they did not wish to move forward or they didn't have enough money to move forward they can decide to move backwards onto this space and for each space that you go back you would get 10 pounds so if i was in space 18 i get 10 20 30 40 pounds and i get to stay there there's one very important rule that you must remember no two players can be on the same space so whenever you move forward or backwards you cannot go onto the same space and that includes when you move backwards so if red wanted to move backwards because they've got no money they can't move backwards because yellow is blocking paris there so they would have to technically just miss a turn if you are unlucky at the beginning of the game and an ill wind blows your balloon the wrong way or it deflates your wallet so you've got no money the only thing you can do if you haven't passed past paris is you have to go all the way back to the start space london there you refill your hand size of money back up to 80 wonga and then you're ready to go again on your next turn the game will end when one player arrives on space number 80 and they have no rumor cards in their hand and they have less than 10 pound if you don't you can't land on this space when a player lands there and they've achieved those goals they win the game and by the way that's not a real cup of tea it looks real but it's not <laughs>
oldie worldie. In fact, it feels as well as looks and plays like a game which has been in your granddad's attic for 50 years and you've just got it out for the first time. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's gonna be up to you. Um, it has this, it, ha it does have this really oldie worldy flair to it, which kind of is, is its own reward. It's, it feels nice and it looks nice and the way that the components fit together are really nice. So let's talk about the components. The box and the box insert are gorgeous. In fact, actually, they're a bit too big for the actual game because everything fits basically in these bottom sections here. And then you just have the travel log cards there and the board sat on the top. So there's quite a lot of waste of space, but this is gonna be a series of games much like uh, the other Purple Brain games, which are like up here, Aladdin which are gonna be, they're all gonna be the same shape and form. And it's gonna be the same with this. There's gonna be a series of old books that are turned into to board games, and they're gonna make a nice collection, which is gonna sit on your shelf. And as you can see, this slides into there. It's really, really elegant. Um, and it's, you know, this, this gold trim is really nice. It's pretty to look at. The board, it looks, basic as i said it looks like it's from the 1950s it looks like an old version of monopoly i, I can compare it to masterpiece which i have down here it kind of got that really old look to it and smell to it almost and even the cards the money cards let's get the money card the money cards again the colors the palette that they've chosen it does look old worldy and this may put you off um, but the cards are good quality. Um, the past part two cards are a good quality as well. They're a nice size. The text is nice. <laughs> the characters are really cute on these cards. It's all a really nice package, but it's not going to be to everyone's taste because this game just doesn't, I don't know, the top hats are nice. I don't know. It's not going to be for everyone. Some of my negativity about the components are you have to put these little, you don't have to put these boards out so you put the money on, but I don't know, it just seemed a bit pointless uh, having that. And again, the travel log cards, they're really cool because you've got all the information you need and the rules and then a little icon for your color, for what color you are. You know, you can't even see that, could be bigger. And again, these rules are so small. I need glasses to read them and why not just read the rule book because the rule book is big print. Why couldn't they have printed one side with the, the, the values and how many spaces and the other side with the rules because it is double sided exactly the same. The rule book is perfect. Um, it's, it explains the rules perfectly. It's in the right order. It's, it's simple. There's not a lot of diagrams but you don't really need a lot of diagrams and it works. It's just two foys. Foys, that's French for pieces of paper. Leafs, leafs, foys, yeah, leaf, yeah. Um, why it didn't come with a story of 80 days around the world in it? Like, <laughs> I don't know, but um, rule book, really good. Quality of components, really good. I do it, as I said, I have niggles about that in the, the, the other board. The gameplay is really, really simple and intuitive. Uh, you, you explain it to people, especially non-gamers, if you explain it to non-gamers, they're like, where's the dice? There's no dice. But you explain it, you say, well, if you want to move four spaces, you have to pay this amount of money. Oh, okay, okay. And then it works. And then th th getting over the simple, comp the, the, the simplicity of, you know, these spaces, when you move into them, they act after on your next turn at the beginning of your turn they have their effect apart from the past part two cards which are take that cards and that's probably the only probably bit of downside with the game is these take that cards um as i said if you manage to run out of money before you get to paris you have to go all the way back to the beginning and get 80 pound and start all over again. And that happened to me because I picked up a pass part two card and it, it got rid of some money from my hand and then someone else picked one up and they chose to play it on me and then I had to lose lots of money and I had to go back to the beginning. So they are kind of nasty, but it is evened out with the, um, the character cards with their special power, which they're all rule breaking special powers. You know, you can double up on someone's space 
um, one of the powers is and that's quite useful or it, it amplifies the amount of money that you're going to get which is useful again um, so that kind of balances it out and again where it's only the first player that can only take one pass path two card and all the other players can take two and choose one that 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 seems to even out but i've always found that when we've played it new players will try the pass path two cards and then midway through the game they won't bother because it just seems like they were getting nasty ones at the time so hmm but the mechanics themselves are really really interesting it's a mathematical problem you you try to evaluate how much money to spend to get you so far and then there's these the bet spaces should you land on a bet space and hopefully get money that way because you've started your turn in that exact position or there's those, the money spaces where you could just stay there and take money it's all a very interesting complex puzzle but it is really simple to understand and play and i mean young children will play to the same kind of level as older children like us adults i mean but um it has this really really nice feel to it you're all moving along you're all racing there's some players that will hold back and i can see where this game has come from the the hare and the tortoise because some people will run ahead and some people will hold back and spend a little bit of money move forward a bit and then and then bet that they're going to be the last place and so they get a bucket load of money and then they all of a sudden they got a load of money in their hand and all of a sudden they run forward it's fantastic all the little decisions that you have to make is that space available? Will that space be available? Can I make it to that space? Should I spend that much money? And then once you get past about the three quarter mark, it's that concentrating of how do I get rid of all my money now and get, get right near the end. That's always been my downfall. I, can't, I don't figure that bit out very well, but a lot of people can do it and do it very, very well. So people that are mathematically minded are going to do really really well at this game because they can suss out okay i need this much money to get that far and then if i do that afterwards and that give me that much money yeah and then you, they can win but the other thing they got to take into account is these rumor cards and they have to get rid of those as well so you really have to think okay i need to get that space and sometimes someone's on that space and so it's like ah so i'll, I'll move forward one space until that person moves off and then someone jumps into that space after them and it's like no and there's there's only a limited amount of those police news spaces so you can get rid of the rumors there so it is a real real really number crunchy thinky game but it's very very light at the same time gameplay if you're playing with about three people will take about 40 minutes to go through uh because there is a little back a lot of back and forth and you you can be rolling forward and then going back and then you know it's like in um and so like a three player game will take that much time i haven't played a six player game but a five player game is really interesting a four player game is really interesting as well three is okay uh, but definitely four and five players probably six players is probably really good as well but um yeah you're looking just over an hour maybe with the full complement of six players um and it is it's just a really enjoyable kind of racing game it's a racing game with a difference with no dice with mathematical problems to solve it's really fun my last little niggle about the game is the back and forth thing of money when it's a player's turn they pay this much to go forward and sometimes you get changed so these money cards are changing hands quite a lot and it's a lot of okay do this to do that and if someone is far away from the money pool you have to rely on someone else to pass you the money and that might be annoying for that player um but it is as i said a lot of back and forth and much like with um the pursuit of happiness there's these tokens which are just going okay i pay this amount of tokens to get that amount of tokens and then on your next turn you're like okay i'm gonna pay these tokens to get those tokens and it's like you know the game is on the board it's the race um you know you could do a digital app for your money for each player but that would probably take it out of the context of the game but um it is what it is it might niggle people it niggles me a little bit just constantly cards to get cards you know it's nice to get just get rid of cards easily i think the 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 values that they have they have 13 15 30 sorry 15 10 5 3 and 1 are pretty good um 
again, maybe maybe real money would be better. Hmm. But overall, around the world in 80 days is a really enjoyable family game. Um, you. Uh, Adults can play this as well, but I think families are going to enjoy this much more. It has that family feel. It has that old vibe of an old school board game, very much like Snakes and Ladders or Monopoly. Yes, I said it. Um, but it is a really enjoyable game. My board game geek rating is there. And uh, that's it. I'm going to sum up by saying thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it informatic that's not the word Informa I hope that you found it to your liking and it's pointed you in the right direction of whether this is a game for your collection or whether this is one that you'd rather mail order for someone else around the world um, if you've enjoyed this video give it a like uh, go and check out my website yeah that's it boardgameseverybodyshould.com um, if you like what I do um, and you want to contribute and throw a few pennies my way and maybe get yourself some promos or some t-shirts You can go to my patreon site and and throw some pennies at me But not too hard Because I might have to go back to Paris a few spaces and get lots more money, but anywho <laughs> Thanks for watching and remember that you don't have to buy every single board game out there You just need to own a few good ones and hopefully I point you in the direction whether this is a good one for you. Until next time, ciao for now. Uh, but the way I like to teach this game is every player is a dragon and the object of the game is to keep flying, you know, keep on flying, keep on flying and they've got to stay in the sky and not come off the board or crash into each other and the last player that is still flying is declared the winner. Each player will choose one of the different colored tokens to represent their dragon. You'll choose a start player and they will place their dragon on the outskirts of the board on one of the white dashes. Then each person in turn order will place their dragons around the board. 28. 28 for, for the four days. Wow. That's it. It's a bargain. Just go, for the love of God people, just go Eston Gen Con, get there. Yeah, yeah, and then you can feel as sick as Jamie does. You can. You can walk away with all the bacterial diseases. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why all the Americans, whenever you saw an American, they would fist pump you. Well, but, this is, oh. this, this is Eric Martin. <laughs> it's not fist pump, Barry. It's, that's not what you're <laughs> thinking of. <laughs> but it's, no, it's, it's actually Eric Martin. Yes. Bang your microphone. Bang to the beat of the drum. Come on. Yeah. When did I just break? No, don't break the box. If you have the misfortune of running out of money before you arrive at the first red space, one of these layover spaces, you can... If you have a hat running... And then you've got no way of getting any money because you can't go back. Well, you can go back. You can go back all the way to the beginning of the board, start in London, and you get your hand size your hand size you get your hand of cards of 80 pounds that's rubbish as well you can't get money because you need to pass a lay-by station a lay-by a lay-by it's not a lay-by it's a lay over space luckily if you haven't passed Paris and you've run out of money you can go all the way back to London and you real feet real re 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 refill Refill your hand size back up to 80 pound. Oh, God's sake. Seven minutes. Get past Paris because you need to get past these these lay, -wise, lay boys. They're not lay boys.